These days, Pat Boone is staying very busy with a variety of projects. At this conference in Washington, D.C., he's serving as spokesman for 60 Plus, a conservative alternative to AARP. Franklin or what? I didn't. I thought you were being interviewed. Live from CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, downtown Washington, D.C. here, 2007, Joseph Farah of World Net Daily filling in for the G. Gordon Liddy on the G. Gordon Liddy Show. He's at home with some food poisoning. We're still a little worried about him. But uh, Mr. Farah was kind enough to fill in for the G-Man here on Radio America. <laughs> Thank you, Franklin. Well, I promised you a pop music legend and uh, we got one for you. Pat Boone joins us for just a few minutes because uh, you've got some uh, company you got to keep uh, across the street here in just a few minutes. Who yes, you I do, Joe. And by the way, I, I admire the fact you grew a mustache just to fill in for Gordon <laughs> Liddy. <laughs> no, that's While here, he stumps for 60 plus and talks up his book on the G. Gordon Liddy radio show. Also got a great new book. I know you're doing a book signing here at CPAC for Pat Boone's yeah. America 50 Years. You know, I started leafing through this book, Pat, and I want to tell you it was like a trip down memory lane. Well, it is. So much nostalgia. <laughs> and there's a lot of uh, unknown things, anecdotes, and, and amazing incidents that have occurred in my life. I think I've lived four or five lives. <laughs> you really have. And the pictures show it. All of these pictures of my career and life, family life, are melded into my, my concerns about the changes taking place in our country and the way our culture and our society have changed some, in some ways not for the better. Now this is sort of toward the wind down anyway. It's not the end, but the wind down of my career in public life. And I'd like, of course, to think that over a 50 year span that I've learned some things, experienced some things that can be beneficial to people who come after me because that was always my goal in my life was to be somebody standing in the crossroads of young people's lives as a teacher saying, hey, don't go that way, that's dead end, kids. Go this way, that leads to productivity, that leads to happiness. And I wrote it every word myself. So um, I, when I tried working with a ghostwriter years ago, I discovered that the ghostwriter wants to write in a true literary fashion and I like to write mine as conversation. You made me cry when you said Boone has talked the talk and walked the straight and narrow in his trademark white boots since he started performing. Host of a hit television show, Boone threatened to quit when his sponsors wanted to bar Harry Belafonte from performing because he was active in a civil rights movement that was gaining ground. When you said Whatever the mood of the day, Boone always saw African Americans as equals. Recently, Jesse Jackson paid him a huge compliment. He said, in fact, when you did all your R&B songs, he said, I think you did more to improve race relations in this country than anybody else in music. Now, for Jesse Jackson to say that uh, was uh, amazing to me, and I'm sure it surprised a lot of people but he said it on their own radio station in Chicago. So soon after that, and it was just a few months ago, I went to his birthday party and uh, I gave him a pair of my white shoes and we wound up together in Jet Magazine. There's a gold mine in the sky far away. In this life, Pat Boone continues to look after his voice and to make music. I am working and I, I've never quit vocalizing and I've never quit singing and I've not been a smoker or, you know, done stuff that would have abused my voice. So I work with a, uh, not just a vocal coach, he himself is a renowned opera singer, Richard Fredericks. And we get together once or twice a week and we sing and he says, you know, your voice is like it was when you were a teenager. You have to keep on exercising, you have to keep on uh, overcoming bad habits you tend to slip into. But there are moments when when I'm singing along with one of my own records and I, I can't tell the difference. In the next years, Boone wants to focus his attention and time on Shirley, his wife of 50 years. And I owe her and I want 
time that we can just travel and do stuff and sit at home and and um, like the other afternoon I did something that almost gave me the bends. I went to a movie with her in the, on a weekday afternoon. I've never thought I, I, I don't have time on a weekday take time off and go to a movie in the afternoon but we did and I loved it. So I want to spend more time with, with Shirley. Now. Everybody's gonna have religion and glory. Everybody's gonna be singing that story. Everybody's gonna have a Boone fights the ticking of the clock. I don't know many who who happily become and, and just enjoy being seniors because uh, there's that that inference, at least inwardly, that I'm getting toward the end, and I don't want to admit that, um, and and I don't want to admit that I've lost anything. Uh, so I keep trying to look like I did when I was on the cover of the Rolling Stone or whatever. And I, I, I'm not a fool. I can see the pictures and people say, oh, you haven't changed. I say, you better get your glasses fixed. But, uh, but yes, I, I have accepted it, that I am definitely a senior. But he does not fear death. I, and I compare it to birth. If, if I could have thought while I was in the birth process, or just before I was born, I'm gonna be yanked out of this nice, warm, secure place. I'm gonna to have to go through a little place and I'm gonna be crunched down and I'm gonna be cut off and I'm gonna be ushered out into some cold world. I would have resisted with everything in me, not realizing that something far grander and better and more liberating than I had ever known was just on the other side of that experience. So. Uh, I've already been born again, so now <laughs> I do look forward, actually, to being ushered into that next existence. Morning,